Okay, great morning. Um, we have uh, new people on the channel, and so you may not be aware for the new people that I have a number of books. I've authored a number of books, and you can get them through Amazon. Now, here are three of them. There are more than three. <laughs> okay. So... The first one that I ever authored is Kundalini from Hell to Heaven, okay? And um, Wisdom from the Completed Journey, Questions Answered, Guidance and Tools for Discovering the Self, okay? So it's on the back. It's uh, Guidance for Those with Awakened Kundalini and for Those Seeking Enlightenment. So it's a description of signs, symptoms of Kundalini awakening, and descriptive stories of those going through the process. Okay, so it's from my 30-year journey through Kundalini, and um, it's actually beneficial for anybody on a spiritual path, but it was written originally for those going through a kundalini um, journey okay it's not your typical kundalini books it's talking this chakra is this color that chakra is that it, it's nothing like that it's more of the journey that kundalini is i call it the rotor rooter of consciousness and it's more on that type of a level it can benefit um anyone and it uh okay even in here are some things for anyone like um pathless zen simplified tools to reveal the truth okay so um there is what you would call a path of no path or sometimes i call it the simplified zen living this helps to center and move you forward. Every move, moment can be used for spiritual sadhana. It must become a mindset, a natural way of life. There are some techniques you can use. It takes moving forward one step at a time. These are tools I have found along the way. If you haven't started this practice, then begin. So we have to, number one, relax. Just be aware of your breathing. Go into the breath and completely relax. Don't attempt to slow it. Just be aware of it and then be aware of the body within, centered in the heart, right side of chest, okay? Number two is focus on one experience, one thing at a time, so you develop mindfulness. Number three, stay in the present. No past, no future. So if you see yourself projecting in the future, bring yourself back to the moment. If you see yourself, uh, you know, uh, wallowing in the past, again, bring yourself back to the moment. You can say the only thing that's happening is, and you do something specific. Like I would say, I'm talking to people, I'm having my coffee. That's it and let the rest of it go and bring yourself back to the moment. Uh, number four, watch the thoughts and be aware of the body and space. So active vipassana or witnessing. Number five, reject everything that you hold to be the you that is transient in nature until you come to what remains, the essence. Neti neti, self-inquiry. I say you look and watch at what is this I. Anything that's moving and transient is not the divine is. Okay, so let's go forward. Um, number six, live your highest truth at all time, honesty and ethically. Number seven, see every moment as sacred and conduct yourself as such. Number eight, repeat the mantra OM. The first, be aware of the sound, the vibration, and then switch and be aware of the silence. Number nine, repeat an audible mantra. One which is very good is I am that I am. Number 10, repeat an open eye mantra while walking, om that I am. 
no matter what you see, say Om that I am, and this breaks down your feeling of separation from existence and life. Number 11, realize that every experience is transient in nature and that it will change. Number 12, see rising emotions as simply movements of energized perception and don't label them. Number 13, realize that energy is neutral. It is only our perception that makes it appear positive or negative. Number 14, everything within the transient realm is directed and held in place by mind and the identity with your story experiences. When mind is transcended, so are the illusions. So that's only one thing that's in this book on um, Kundalini, okay? So it's, it's got a lot of things like, what is silence? What about fears? Um, about channels, living sadhana, how you assist. Um, about what the Kundalini is, what Kundalini does, about cities, about the uh, levels and layers or the what people call the chakras, uh, Kundalini phenomena, symptoms that you may experience, um, how Kundalini gets started, what's the purpose of it. So all of these types of things are found in the Kundalini from Hell to Heaven. Um, so all of these books can be gotten through Amazon. Just look up Ganga Karmokar, K-A-R-M-O-K-A-R, and you'll see all these books online. Second book is Song of the Butterfly, Finding the Freedom Within. Okay, these are little short things on all sorts of of um, subjects. So we have the spiritual path, spiritual practice, the synopsis, the guru, diksha, God, reality, and non-duality, um, bhakti, karma, and karma yoga, what they are, the now versus the path, surrender, the ego, mind, fear, desires, and emotions, thoughts, vairagya, and witnessing, Intellectual trap, knowing versus knowing about, self-realization, <coughs> excuse me, relationships, sex and love, um, death, birth and suicide, miscellaneous body breathing, meditation, astral realms, healing, suffering, religion, beliefs, samadhis, maya, divine illusion, material wealth. Part two is on the Kundalini path. Part three is the Christian perspective, uh, changes in consciousness, etc. So all of those are found within Song of the Butterfly. So it really um, has a lot of questions that people have asked. Um, okay, here's one about Kundalini and Pace say Kundalini has to do with sex. Okay, well, it has nothing to do with sex. Kundalini has nothing to do with sexual energy. If that were the case, then sexual addicts would all be in the midst of Kundalini awakenings. That simply is not the case. Those that equate Kundalini with sexual practices, i.e. so-called Tantra, will simply wind up becoming more deluded and trapped within another type of conditioning. Okay. So, um, Anyway, there's a lot of things in here about kundalini, kundalini myths, kundalini warnings, do not force it, meditation. Um. <laughs> okay. I 
chasing powers. So these are things that were, um, again, uh, given to different people, um, mostly when I had the Yahoo groups before I started the YouTube, I had direct interaction with people one-to-one -one, and this comes through all the questions they had asked, okay? So, Song of the Butterfly, Finding the Freedom Within. And last but not least, well, not last, the, there are other ones online. I think there's at least six, maybe, different books. But this one is Wisdom from the Realm of Non-Duality. So what is it like to be a realized being? What is it like to live in non-duality? How is non-duality different from the realm of duality? So, um, So if you're interested in non-duality and FIDA, what it is like, um, you might enjoy this book. Uh, I don't talk a lot about non-duality on um, my tarot site because most people are not going to understand it. They live in the realm of dual duality, dualistic mind, okay? Um, so here is enlightenment is clarity. So the question was, the person said, the clearest teacher I have ever known had no interest in waking up. No concept of it before it happened, but she also doesn't define enlightenment as anything other than clarity in the moment. And I said, yes, that's an excellent example. Enlightenment is clarity, and there is nothing other than this moment. When the baggage is blown out, that, all, that is all that remains. Before enlightenment, you chop wood and carry water. After enlightenment, there is chopping wood and carrying water. Life is what remains, the great adventure, the eternal mystery. Chasing after lights, bells, and whistles ends. The best show is right in front of you, and the best seat in the house is the one you're sitting in. So go with the flow and dance to the universal song. There is no seeking unless there is lack. Okay, so you're no longer seeking anything. You're in the present moment. The mind is still. There are no extraneous thoughts coming and going. Okay, so that's part of it. Um, Okay, here's an, another one. <clears throat> On zero point balance, when personality and form fall away. The commentator <clears throat> says, just as it is in the nature of the enterprise for there to be pouting and shouting as long as there are people who present themselves as God, self-realized or not, there will be people trying to bring them back to earth. My answer was absolutely. The personality never is God. This is the danger of those that come back and wrap enlightenment around ego. When enlightenment incurs, occurs, you are not you. You do not exist. There is simply source. Coming back into a sense of form, you become then a simple, simple most ordinary person. The games are gone. Personality and form are simply cells in the body of God. Although from there, the Advaitic mind is paramount. Still, you have no such egoic ideations that the personality and form have anything to do with the impersonal essence. 
Within zero point balance, no illusions remain. You know at once the one and the apparent diversity. While the essence is one, the personal experience gives it flavor. There is simply awe at this mystery. Okay. So you'll see in here, there are those people that came and were very disrespectful, and you see how I handled it throughout the whole thing. Um, but um, here's a, I'll read one more thing here. It's about uh, Kundalini awakenings. It says, if you were in the midst of a full-blown kundalini awakening with all the inherent difficulties that arise, you would surely want to know. If you are simply having good vibrations, it might not be kundalini awakening at all or simply an early start of pranic surges. They are not one and the same. Commentator says he could try to deceive me with words, but... I also can pay no attention to them, just accept vibrations. Shaktipat, to the best of my knowledge so far, is not a solitary instance of initiation, but a permanent process, so that many in the midst persons emit ben benevolent energy flows. I said, then you might want to further your education of what a full-blown kundalini awakening entails because it is not simply a benevolent energy flow. The energy itself is neither positive nor negative. It simply activates all the stored cellular memories and brings to the surface everything held within the three bodies. There are reasons for the many cautionary notes that have been voiced down through the ages. That it can and does lead to madness and severe health problems if not rightly entered and managed. Sensing vibrations and having a kundalini process going are two different things. One that is in the midst of a full-blown process can enter into terrors, visions, altered perceptions, and consciousness, seeing paranormal lights, nod, and can in some instances die. It is not simply feeling a vibration. Those in the midst have energies that are out of sync in many cases. It is unbalanced while powerful. If not completed, they can throw another into further imbalance, throw another into further imbalance. Overdoing energy in an already difficult phase can cause symptomology to become even more erratic. Commentator says one should just separate, as Russian people say, cutlets from flies. Shaktipat from the personality of the guru. Thank you for the offering your book. Unfortunately, I do not feel any large size reading right now. I said this has nothing to do with personalities. This has to do with intellectual or studied facts and figures of what the process is versus having gone through the whole of the process successfully and knowing the ways and means to navigate it in a sane and balanced manner. If you spoke with those that have gone through an out-of-control awakening and the difference between that and coming into balance and understanding what is being traversed versus having some general theories and half knowledge, you would indeed find that it makes a great deal of difference for those that are doing a yoga practice of asanas, etc. Without awakening, it matters little. Just because one does kundalini yoga or other yogas, it doesn't mean that they are in the midst of an awakened kundalini. Some that get shaktipat do not have an awakening, or they may have a quick surge and then once again settle back into normality some may have spontaneous awakening through many varied and sundry means, but trust me, if you do have an awakening and find yourself in the midst of full-blown manifestations for years, 
When it ends, you know. It goes from tra traversing hell to heaven. When the void is entered, and then it travels back down into the heart, the journey is at an end. Self-realization is entered. The emptiness of the phenomenal world is lived. Peace remains where once there was all manner of difficult path encounters. There are no longer doubts nor questions. Source is known. Shakti rests within Parma Shiva. The transient and constant are no longer two. So that was just a quick thing about Kundalini and um, traversing the path to realization. So anyway, those are three of the books that you can find on Amazon if you are so inclined. So thanks for tuning in. Much love and light, and we'll see you online.